What's up guys? In one of my last videos, I went over how you can deploy an agent that you build with Google's agent development kit to Cloud Run. In my opinion, this is still the best way to go about doing it. But today I wanna to take a look at their new service called Agent Engine. This is an even higher level of abstraction than Cloud Run is. There are a few prerequisites that you'll need to make sure you take care of before you can actually start jumping in and doing this. Number one, you want to make sure that you have the G Cloud CLI tool installed on your computer. But you can find this over on Google's documentation and it'll walk you through how to actually find uh, the Google Cloud CLI installation and how to set everything up. As part of that sign in and setup process for the Google Cloud or G Cloud CLI tool, you'll need to authenticate with your Google Cloud platform account. Make sure that's done before you try, you will get an error if it's not already done and you'll end up having to do it anyway. The next thing that you'll need to do is go over to the Google Cloud Platform project that you wanna use inside of your account and create a Google Cloud storage bucket that you can use for this project that you're gonna be creating. You can do that by going to Google Cloud Console and creating a bucket from Cloud Storage. The next thing you'll need to do is enable the Vertex API Agent Engine is a part of Google Cloud's Vertex platform, which is an AI platform that they've built, offering you a number of different services for AI application development. You'll need to go over there and enable that API, and then you'll be all set to go. All right, let's take a look here at what I've got. I have a really simple root agent that I am just making it a generalist agent that's able to engage in some conversation with the user. Nothing special, and because really this video isn't exactly about the agent itself, we're not really gonna focus on much more beyond that. We're gonna go and install the necessary dependencies to be able to make this work. So we'll bring up pip install, but because this is has these square brackets and that kind of messes around with Z shell, we're gonna put that in a single quote there. I've already done this, so it says requirement already satisfied, but it might not be the case for you if you've not done this yet, so you'll wanna install that stuff there. We're gonna to need to import at the top here, vertex, AI, we can bump that up there. Then we are going to add in our Vertex AI init to init our project within Vertex AI. If, you come, if you've ever worked with Firebase, it's kind of similar to when you do like Firebase init or init application or whatever the actual function call is, kind of similar to that. And we are actually going to be using these, but from, from environment variables. Now we have that. Now for location, Right, project ID, that's gonna be the ID of the project you created. I'm not gonna show you what my project ID is. Location is gonna be the region ID. So for example, let's bring over uh, the documentation here. And basically, um, agent engine only supports certain regions. So here are the regions that it supports. We have US Central 1, US West 1, Europe West 1, Europe Southwest 1, Asia East 1, and Asia Northeast 1. Uh, and then it gives the rough location of where these things all are. Of course, you're gonna wanna use the one that's nearest to you. For me, that's US Central one. The next step is gonna be to actually start up or create the application inside of Agent Engine. So to do that, we're gonna go back up to the top and you're gonna import, whoop, well, not that. You're gonna uh, add something in your imports, which is gonna be from vertexai.preview and then reasoning engines. We're just gonna really use this temporarily here. Um, but later on, we're gonna remove this when we actually go to deploy it to Agent Engine itself in the cloud. This is just gonna be running locally so that we can test it out and play around with things. So let's do this. Let's now add app equals reasoning engines ADK app, and we'll throw in our root agent and we will turn on tracing. So technically now this is all we really need to do. Um, like I mentioned before, everything is really abstracted away. They really handle a lot of the work for you. But let's actually go and see this in action so we can kind of get some proof that it is working and doing what we hopefully think it should be doing because seeing is believing, obviously. So what this is going to do is we're going to create a session inside of our agent, which is going to go to app. So that brings us right up here, which of course then brings us to the root agent inside of there. It's gonna be create session. It's by the way, this is a little bit different than the sessions that ADK kind of gives you and that you can create with ADK. We'll go over those in another video, but I just wanna call out there that like it's sort of similar, but actually I think it underlying, it uses the same stuff under the hood um, is my understanding, but it's just a different way of working with it. It does look a little bit different. So we have app and then we're gonna create a session and we're gonna call that session. Well, the user ID is gonna be this, which is how we'll identify it later on. 
And then we're also going to add print. So there wasn't a print there before. We're going to add print there. And now this will in fact work. So let's go ahead and run. So we'll do Python main.py and we'll get to see this running shortly. Oh, wait a minute, my bad. That was dumb. I just printed the word session, not the actual session. So that was on me. That can't win them all, you know? Let's see what this looks like though. This gives us what we were expecting to get, which is the ID. So that's whatever internally created ID there is. The app name, which for us is just default app name. We didn't give it another name. And then we have the user ID. That's the ID that we created right here. State, events, and last update time. We didn't do anything with state or events. Agents um, in ADK work off of events. Um, I think another great video to do is maybe like on the event loop or something like that in a future video. So stay tuned for that one. Um, and then we also didn't add anything to state. Again, I'm going to have a video on sessions, state and memory. So that's coming soon as well. Also, by the way, if you're enjoying this video, go and check out the Reddit community that I created, Agent AI Dev, link in the description below. And if you're enjoying this type of video and you like this type of content, I'm going to be making a lot more videos on agents and AI and how to build the best applications possible. So definitely subscribe and stay tuned for more of that. So we created this session here. It obviously therefore exists, but let's go ahead and take this a step further. We can also print all of the sessions that are currently inside of our application. So maybe if someone else had created a session somehow, once you deploy it, you'd be able to see all the sessions that are currently being maintained inside of your application. So basically we would do this. We would say app list sessions, and then we would call for the user sessions. Now, okay, we've gotten all of the sessions, but let's say that we want to get a specific session. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and actually say that session is going to equal a specific session now, right? The one that we created before. So let's say a specific session and we will go and, uh, and print that. Let's take a look at what that looks like right now. So same thing as before, basically, right? It gives us a specific session, but this is how we can actually, um, actually search for the session that we're looking for as opposed to just getting the session that we just created or as opposed to listing all of the sessions. All right, let's take this up a notch here because I know that sessions, I don't know, maybe that's like not the most interesting thing in the world. Let's instead, actually we do want this session though. Let's instead actually use the agent that we just created. So let's use the, um, the application that we just created, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, uh, we're gonna create basically a stream. So we're gonna query this actually, and we're gonna actually stream the events that come out of it with this for loop here. Um, and we'll see what that looks like. So our agent can't actually do anything with weather. So instead, let's say, how are you? you doing today and let's see what that gets us let's clear that okay so it took a little bit to actually get that to go through but we did end up getting something and this is a json object that has content parts uh, and then it has the actual response that we got back because we only really ask something pretty simple and it was able to just return its entire response in one kind of event. We didn't really end up with a ton there. Um, but if you had something more complex that it needed to respond to and it took a lot longer, it would have streamed everything there for you and you would see a lot more here. For example, if you had function calls, then it would actually show you the specific functions that it was making those calls to as a part of those events. So those would be uh, independent uh, individual events that they were, that it was going through. So what we've done thus far, while cool, we got it to work, it was really just for local testing and making sure that everything works the way that we wanted to. It wasn't really for actually deploying it and having other people use it, which I'm assuming is the reason that you're interested in doing this because you're watching this video. Uh, so let's get rid of this stuff here. We don't need this anymore and we're actually just gonna replace it. Uh, we can also get rid of this reasoning engine thing up here. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a different import from Vertex AI, which is agent engines. We'll come back down here like we were before, and we will add in 
a new agent engine here with our root agent. So remote app, remote because it's actually gonna be deployed somewhere. Agent engines, we'll create an agent engine, we'll put in our root agent, and the requirements here, kind of like how you have a requirements TXT, will just actually be Google Cloud AI platform and then ADK and agent engines. Now what we're gonna do is also get our, um, our agent here, our app, and we're gonna stream a query here and it's the exact same thing, the same session or the same user ID, we're passing in the same session. But notice this time around, we don't pass in root agent because we're actually now just talking to the application that's being hosted on agent engine instead of the root agent that is local on our computer. So instead now what we do is we just specify which uh, session we want to actually have this conversation or this message be a part of. And so we're gonna do the user ID and the session ID. We again, don't have anything having to do with weather here. So what we're gonna do is say, hello, how are you today? And then we'll just print the event. This is going to take some time because it's gonna to have to deploy everything, set up all of the infrastructure that comes along with that, and then it will eventually have to delete it because we're gonna add the deletion code in there as well. And again, I will show you why it's, why I like to do that here, uh, just because I think it makes it easier. Also, because I don't personally use Agent Engine, I use Google Cloud Run to deploy my stuff. So um, I don't want this to be up there and then have trouble deleting it afterwards. But what we would do is we would have this here, which is root or sorry, remote app, app and then delete and force true. Putting in or setting force true Basically, we'll also delete all of the child resources that may get deployed or set up, configured as a result of doing this, which we don't want because they could potentially be costing you money. Uh, but we will, at, at the very least, be able to see this kind of an action here. Um, and we'll also then see it get deleted. All right, so finally, this whole thing did finish. It took like five to 10 minutes, actually. So quite a while, especially given, I think, that you know we don't have that big of an application to deploy. But regardless, uh, we did go through and we, we checked out the session, it printed that, and then it printed the events, and then it actually did go ahead and delete the agent and its resources. Some stuff that I also wanna cover that I think is pretty useful, let me bring this over here, is this, this diagram right here. And so the question I think that makes sense to also ask is where does agent engine fit in? First off, this is where we've been living right here inside of Agent Engine. Now you could have a client that might be, you know, the Claude desktop application or a custom application that you make or uh, maybe Coulomb AI, which is going to be, you know, the thing that I'm working on, a little platform for, for building agents with no code um, and, and also managing them and stuff. So, so that's another thing it could be. Um, and then on the other side, you have the framework itself that really is separate from Agent Engine. Agent Engine is really just a, a deployment wrapper. It's the infrastructure that kind of just sucks in your, your, the agent framework and the application that you use to build um, and then makes it available to the rest of the world, right, via cloud. You also have things like observability, which is tracing, logging, monitoring, things like that. Um, and then you have tools, whether it be MCP tools or just standard function tools or whatever it is, you have tools as well. And then you have models and you can use whatever model you want with a lot of these agent frameworks. So a lot of these things, we, we I think maybe look at them as being, or sometimes in our heads, they can, they can feel like one thing, but in reality, there are a number of disparate things that we kind of, uh, we use to coordinate together to actually deliver the application that we're looking to, to provide to users. And so that's where Agent uh, Engine fits in here. Something else that I wanted to show as well is Google Cloud Platform on their GitHub, they have an Agent Starter Pack, which is a basically a starter template that you can use to create your own agent applications. Um, I believe it is specifically uh, or, or like more so, I guess, geared at like Agent Engine, deploying with Agent Engine, but I don't, I don't know if it's um, only for Agent Engine necessarily, but there is some great stuff in here that, that you can use to help kind of as a, as a starting point for developing your applications, your AI agent applications. And they say that 
uh, that it is production ready to, to use this to build stuff with this. So that's another great tool and resource that you can have. Our resources also will be in the description below. Now I mentioned earlier that that the the console, the Google Cloud Platform console is not really built out for Agent Engine. And that's because it literally is not. It's like they don't even have anything. This is what it says, Agent Engine is coming to Google Cloud Console UI soon. Um, so if you do have something that you deployed, you actually can't go in here and just delete it or see what it is or see the usage or anything like that. You have to use other tools available to be able to monitor it and to see what's going on. The other thing that I also want to bring up is pricing. So there is a cost with Agent Engine. It's not free. I don't know what it uses under the hood um, other than like a CPU and RAM. I don't know what it uses under the hood if it's a if it's like a cloud run instance or, or service that they're creating on your behalf. I don't really know. And it's it's not really clear. Like they're very much not all that transparent about how Agent Engine works behind the scenes. Maybe that information is coming soon, but at the moment you're looking at at least about 80 bucks per month to be able to run uh, an AI agent using Agent Engine. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how to put together or how to deploy an AI agent with ADK to Agent Engine. If you enjoyed this video, definitely subscribe down below and check out the links in the description where all the resources are, including links to our Reddit community and Kulam AI, uh, which is a new platform that I've been working on for building AI agents. And then also, if you're interested and you need some cheap or free hosting, you can get a $200 credit with DigitalOcean using my link in the description below. Take care. See you guys in the next video.